AP 120, Chapter 8, Topics, Muscles of the Abdomen and Lower Limbs. All right, so we have muscles that are important for breathing or respiration. The most important muscle for that is the diaphragm. Uh, the diaphragm actually has its origin as a circle going all the way around the edge of the um, internal body. So it goes from the vertebra, the ribs, sternum, all the way around. And then its insertion is in the middle in what's called a central tendon. So again, you don't need to remember these. Uh, just the diaphragm, big, thin sheet of a muscle that has a tendon in the center, so it inserts into itself. And what does the diaphragm do? Well, it increases vertical volume of lungs. So the uh, dome-shaped diaphragm, when it contracts, it pulls down as it flattens out. That pulling down, increasing the volume in the lungs, thereby allowing air to flow into the lungs. Inspiration, air flowing into the lungs. Uh, another uh, muscles, a bunch of them that are important for inhalation is the external intercostals. They lie between the ribs. And when they contract, they help to uh, elevate the rib cage, again, increasing the volume of the lungs to allow air to flow into the lungs. Then we also have the internal intercostals. Uh, they are also between the ribs, but they are in the opposite orientation. So what they do is they depress the ribs during forced exhalation. So if you want to breathe out really quick, you would contract your internal intercostal muscles, and that would help to depress the rib cage, uh, compressing the lungs and forcing the air out faster. All right, muscles in the abdominal wall. First up is rectus abdominis. We have two rectus abdomini muscles lying next to each other. The rectus abdominis is a thin sheet of a muscle. And uh, what does it do? Well, Turns out it flexes the vertebral column. So when it contracts, it pulls on the um, ribs and sternum, causing you to bend your back, to bow, as it were. Now, when you look at the rectus abdominis, you see that it has these little extra bits of uh, tendinous tissue. These are called the tendinous intersections. And basically what happens because of that is that when the rectus abdominis gets built up from, say, doing lots and lots of sit-ups, only these regions of the rectus abdominis get thicker, giving the person that six-pack look. Finally, there is a thick sheet of connective tissue that goes all the way around the rectus abdominis called the rectus sheath. All right, external obliques. We have uh, one on each side of the body, and the external obliques uh, attach to connective tissue that end up forming the center line of dense connective tissue called linea alba. So linea alba is technically what the external oblique is attached to. And what happens when the external oblique uh, contracts? Well, all of the above. Uh, unilaterally, if you just have one external oblique contract, you'll get lateral flexion, so bending over to the side, or rotation of the vertebral column, a twisting of the trunk of the body. If both external obliques contract, you get uh, help in flexing the vertebral column, so for bowing, and it also compresses the abdomen. Then we have the internal oblique. Internal oblique is deep to or underneath the external oblique. What does the internal oblique do? Well, all the same things. Unilaterally allows for lateral flexion, bending over to the side, uh, and rotation of the vertebral column, twisting the trunk. Bilaterally, both of them contract. It can help to flex the vertebral column or bow and also help to compress the abdomen. All right, moving on to the legs. Here is a uh, image of a section of the thigh. And the thigh, you can see, has muscles broken up into three compartments. You have the anterior compartment, where you find the uh, quadriceps femoris muscle group. You have the medial compartment where you find the adductor group, and then the posterior compartment where you find the hamstrings. So here is the adductor group, a collection of muscles in the adductor group. Here's, uh, here they are. We have one lit up, but there's multiple ones. Uh, what does it do? 
helps to adduct the thigh at the hip and also flex the thigh at the hip. So when it contracts, adducts, pull the leg if it's already sticking out laterally inward, and then also can help to flex or raise the thigh at the hip. All right, uh, uh, deeper in the body, in the abdominal pelvic region, we have this muscle called iliopsoas. Iliopsoas leaves that area and goes to the femur and, and it inserts into that behind the um, femur, posterior side. And what does iliopsoas do? It's flexion of the thigh at the hip. So it helps to let us um, raise up our leg, or bend our thigh so our knee goes anteriorly. All right, on the posterior side of the body, we have the gluteus maximus, gluteus maximus, a very large muscle. And what does it do? It extends the thigh at the hip. So it does the opposite. Instead of it pulls thigh back down, pulls it back posteriorly. All right, on the lateral sides of each leg, we have a tiny muscle called the tensor fasciae uh, It's attached to the um, oscoxy and also into this big piece of connective tissue called the iliotibial band. You don't need to remember this part. So what does tensor fasciae lati do? Well, it helps to abduct the thigh at the hip or pull the thigh the leg out laterally. And it also a little bit helps us to flex the thigh of the hip, just a little bit. All right, sartorius muscle. Sartorius muscle is this thin strip of a muscle crossing over the front of the thigh. And what does a sartorius muscle do? Well, it helps to flex the thigh, so it helps to raise the thigh, and also helps to laterally rotate the thigh. So because it's going across like this, if it shortens, it could pull the leg out laterally, twist it laterally, lateral rotation. All right, here we have rectus femoris, the center muscle in the thigh. Um, what does rectus femoris do? I just wish to point out that it does cross two joints, the hip joint and the knee joint. So what does it do? It extends the leg at the knee, so it lets you kick out, and it flexes the thigh at the hip. So it flexes the thigh at the hip, it raises the leg up, and then extends the leg at the knee, allows the knee to straighten out for a kick. All right, quadriceps femoris group is a group of four muscles found in the anterior region of the thigh. It includes this muscle, rectus femoris. And what do they do? Those muscles all work to extend the leg at the knee, to straighten the knee out if it's bent. All right, flip over to the posterior side. Here we have a group of three muscles that make up the hamstrings group. What does the hamstrings group do? That's right, it helps to extend the thigh at the hip. It helps to pull the leg back down and it flexes the leg at the knee. So it helps to pull the lower leg up, bending the knee. All right, moving down to the lower leg, we have this anterior muscle called tibialis anterior. Tibialis because it's next to the tibia, anterior because it's in the front. Here it is again. What does tibialis anterior do? That's right, it dorsiflexes the foot. As you can follow the tendon, it wraps around to underneath the foot so that when it contracts, it basically pulls the foot up, dorsiflexing the foot. All right, flip over to the posterior side. We have this large double-headed muscle called gastrocnemius. And what does gastrocnemius do? That's right, it helps to flex the leg at the knee because it does Across the knee joint and also helps to plantar flex the foot. It goes down and inserts into bones of the foot. So uh, plantar flexing, moving the foot so the toes go down, or you could also say tiptoeing, getting out going on tiptoes is using gastrocnemius. Underneath or deep to gastrocnemius is another muscle called soleus. So here's soleus by itself. What does soleus only crosses the ankle joint, so what does soleus do? That's right, it helps to plantar flex the foot, it helps to allow us to stand on tiptoes. And that is it for this chapter eight lectures.